best laid plans of mice and men. In very rare occasions, planning is useless. This was not one of those very rare occasions. If I would have done more planning, I would now have the accurate case temperatures I wanted. But onward the search goes. Two problems were bothering me from the case temperature testing. Not being able to get a good thermal mount of the MOSFET at the edge of the heat sink, and the large increase in drain lead temperature between the reference test and the case temperature test. I want to see if I could fix the dent I put in one of the center heat pipes and see if doing away with the airspace of the dent would help with the case to sink thermal resistance. I used some very low melting temperature solder paste to fill in the dent. It's tin, bismuth, and silver and melts at less than 300 degrees Fahrenheit. It melted to the heat pipe easier than I expected and that may have foretold a problem. I just don't know. I've never soldered onto a heat pipe before, so I didn't make that much of it. I'm going to have to flatten the area that was filled with solder, so I'm just using some 400 grit sandpaper on a small granite surface plate. This is where I discovered why I couldn't get a good thermal mount at the edge of the heat sink. After getting the high solder spot down, I realized I was now sanding both outside edges and not touching the inside portion of the mounting surface. It's so hard to see here, but that gap is a lot bigger than it looks. I'm pretty sure the heat sink didn't come that way. And the first thing I thought, I'm bending it when I'm mounting the MOSFET. It's a pretty thin piece of aluminum holding the heat pipes in place. I should have planned my mounting out a bit better. A whole lot better. Well, no choice now. I continued to sand it flat and got it quite flat. At least as flat as the edge of my square. So now to give it a test run and see. I'm going to mount the MOSFET with just enough pressure to keep it from moving around. With the very light mounting pressure, the temperature difference case to ambient is maybe a degree or two more than before the dent repair. And the case to the hottest heat pipe is about 5 degrees centigrade more. So I'm going to tighten it a bit. I should have waited for the ambient probe to stabilize, but I didn't. So I switched to reading the case temperature and it does go down. So tighten it up a bit, knocked maybe four degrees off the case temperature. And of course the ambient hasn't changed. So I decide to tighten it up some more. Only now the temperature starts going the other way. Fast. In just a few seconds, I go from a case temperature of 75 degrees centigrade to a case temperature of 90 plus. So I just shut it down. I do remount it and give it another try but the temperature just goes straight up and I stop it before the case hits 100 degrees centigrade. I know now I have damaged heat pipes and I really feel like it's all of them. There is almost no heat being transferred to the fins. They couldn't all fail at once though. I didn't think of using soap water till I'd already poked a hole in the top one. I was pretty sure I could see a crack in it with the microscope. So with a nice coating of soap water I'm going to put some heat on the pipes and see if I get any bubbles out. Well, the bottom one is bad. The top one had the same looking crack in it, so I'm sure the sanding and bending damaged those outer two. I'm not getting any bubbles out of the center two. But it is definitely harder to melt the solder on the pipe with the dent I repaired. So I'm going to have to step up the process a bit. I think I'll drill out the ends of these two heat pipes so I can put some air in them. Okay, that's the one without the dent. That means I destroyed that one when drilling the hole for the thermocouple. That's the reason for the temperature difference between the reference test and the case temperature test with the thermocouple, not the area of the hole and the dent. This last one doesn't look like it's leaking, but it may have been before I patched the dent. Who knows? I'm going to have to take a different approach to measuring the case temperature. The exposed heat pipes are not going to work well for testing. They are just too fragile. So I flattened both sides of a quarter inch thick piece of copper bar, drilled a hole for the thermocouple, and cut a channel to run the thermocouple wire out one end. Just like with the heat sink, I'm going to let the thermocouple bead stick out just a bit and hold it in place with some hot melt glue. That should make a good mounting surface for a TO247 case 
and with a bit of spring to the thermocouple bead, it should make good thermal contact. I'm going to use a curved piece of 8 inch aluminum to mount the case to the copper test bar. With clearance slots for the screws, that should give me a bit of spring tension. Maybe even add some springs to the screws for mounting. Now I just have to find a good heat sink to use with it. One that doesn't have direct contact heat pipes would definitely be a plus. But the copper is big enough to cover the entire area of a CPU heat sink. So I may just order me another one of these. I'll have to do some research and some planning this time. Thank you for watching.